Today, at the beginning of this week, we are having a discussion about a question, a statement I have seen recently around the community of players being, you know, Mythic Plus players, let's say, getting interested into, into raiding, or maybe vice versa. Maybe you have been for a long time a, you know, raider only, a raid logger, or just someone who in general doesn't get into Mythic Plus and wants to try Mythic Plus in this season. Now, unlike the raid with their awakened version, Mythic Plus is not any easier than it was in previous seasons, but let's say you want to get into this mod, and many times when this happens, you will have this question. Am I good to go? You know, can I transfer all of my knowledge from Mythic Plus if I want to get into raiding? Or, I am a Hall of Fame raider, I'm a pretty good raider, and I want to push, you know, high Mythic Plus keys, am I good to go into Mythic Plus with my raider knowledge? Now, players will usually have varying experiences about this, you will often hear players say, oh sure, we got into our guild some top Mythic Plus player and he was amongst our better DPS. Meanwhile, others will say, Jesus Christ, stay away from Mythic Plus only players because they get into the raid and they fail every single mechanic. You also have the vice versa edition where Mythic Plus players invite a raider only guy that also completely stomps the damage meters and does just fine while others just invite him because he has high item level and very good progress in the raid only to just screw up every mechanic possible and then leaving the group at the second wipe calling everyone clowns. So what exactly do you transfer? What exactly do you carry over when it comes to how good you are at playing when you go from the raid to Mythic Plus or from Mythic Plus to the raid? Now Mythic Plus is definitely better at teaching you to be independent. You are a strong independent player who don't need no carry. Yas King, go slay, hashtag kill all raiders. Right? Because Mythic Plus teaches you how to manage your interrupts, your stuns, your crowd controls, even your defensives by your own. You don't have a raid leader, you don't have anyone to babysit you and basically just spoon feed what you have to do at different times, different uh, timers in the fight, you have to do all yourself. And, generally speaking, you have to do more than in the raid. Things like interrupts, knockups, knockbacks, silences, stuns, disorients, these things are, generally speaking, of course, not used in the raid. So, even just from that angle, you get to use more things in Mythic Plus. However, then comes the question, how many of these things are going to be useful when you carry them over in the raid? For example, you are fighting, let's say, Smolderon. How relevant is your experience in handling crowd controls, stops, interrupts, and, you know, multi-mob management in a fight like Smolderon? Well, not, not, not really, right? You don't really carry any of that Mythic Plus experience with you once you fight this type of boss, which is, generally speaking, you know, one target, maybe spawning one ad every once in a while, which also cannot be interrupted or CC'd, etc, etc. None of that Mythic Plus knowledge is going to help you. We can then look this in reverse when it comes to the raid. As mentioned, you're not going to be clicking nearly as many different buttons. Many of the things you have at your disposal are going to be unused in an encounter. So when you move into Mythic Plus, suddenly your knowledge won't be about min-maxing your rotation for maximum DPS, but now you find yourself having to use your silence, your AoE silence, your single target stun, your AoE stun, your root, things that you just don't use and are not used to using in the raid. That is because it is the main difference between a Mythic Plus player and a Raider. Both type of players want to minima, so they want to be as efficient, effective and good as possible. You will often see a DPS player in the raid be super precise about calculating all of the GCDs to use in their opener the GCDs to use on a cooldown, button by button, press by press. Why? Because they're not thinking about crowd control, they're not thinking about interrupts, how to manage multiple targets, how to be aware of their defensives in case a cast goes off. None of that happens in the raid. So the only other thing that's left for them to min-max is how to do as much damage as possible. Meanwhile, a DPS player in Mythic Plus scientifically speaking, does something known as not giving a shit. 
when it comes to that you will almost never see a mythic plus player being so precise and so meticulous about min maxing all of the buttons of their dps rotation because what is more relevant when your your vengeance demon hunter tank is pulling every single mob in the first in, in the first room of any dungeon there is like 20 mobs in there what is more relevant is interrupting the right targets, stunning or AOEing, CCing the right targets, and then doing damage. At that point, minimaxing your damage is not nearly as relevant as it would be in a raid fight. So you are going for a lot of knowledge in both activities, but they are quite different. None of that DPS minimaxing or obsessively checking raid bots every two minutes trying to change every possible gem or talent options or different rotations, none of that is done in Mythic Plus because it's not nearly as relevant. And then in Mythic Plus you are much more into which packs can we group together. How many stops does our comp have compared to how many things do we need to stop on the packs we are pulling? Can we actually do this four pack pull and interrupt these six casts which one shot us in you know plus 18 or something can we do it with our comp that is what becomes more relevant in mythic class and again if you move into the raid all of this is irrelevant doesn't actually give you much of anything in terms of experience and this is very similar also for healers so far i mentioned only the dps but just like just like dps raid healers are also going to be very anal very precise about min maxing their gcds for their big cooldowns at particular moments when in mythic class that's not really a thing in mythic class the healer will function very similar to a dps because at high levels as you all know at this point if you let a cast go through or a dangerous you know ability go through you kind of get one shot so it's not that the healer can do much about it so they will be more into trying to stop and trying to interrupt etc etc rather than setting up their 11 gcd opener on a discipline priest like they would do in the raid and same goes for tanking. Tanking in the raid is much more about positioning and moving around the boss, whereas in Mythic Plus, it's a constant fight of survival as you're pulling 15 mobs and having to precisely time your cooldowns based on the size of pulls you want to do. Can I actually do this four pack pull if I don't have my cooldowns, for example? That's not something you carry over in the raid. So at first glance, the answer would be no. You don't really carry over that much knowledge from Mythic Class if you're going to raiding. And if you go from raiding to Mythic Class, you also don't carry that much knowledge. The second part of the experience you might have in the two activities is how do you stay alive, right? How do you use your defensive? How do you position in the fight in the two activities? That's another thing that becomes quite more different because in the raid, as we mentioned at the start, you're much more likely to be spoon-fed, to be, to be handed knowledge from your raid leader about the difficult moments of a fight, right? You will get to know as you fight, for example, Rashok, that there are one, two, three, four dangerous phases in the fight, which is where you have to focus your health stone, your health potion, and your defensives. And that's where you want to use them. Nowadays, raiding guilds even put personals or health stones or health potion in their notes in their healing notes to tell their players when to use those things meanwhile back to mythic plus you are again on your own you don't have a raid leader you don't have anyone spoon feeding you when bad is happening and you have to come up with it yourself you have to find a way to stay alive by yourself and that is more diverse knowledge. You're like, okay, we are pulling this pack. This is the pack with casters that can put a massive dot on players. So I want to use my defensive for that. However, in the next pack, we have the mobs that do the massive AOE. So which one should, which defensive should I use? How many do I have for the next pack, etc., etc. That is not really something that happens nearly as much in the raid because the raid is much more scripted than a mythic plus key. Where you get different knowledge in a raid, though, is in the movement. Because what you get much more, much, much more in the raid compared to Mythic Class is to dodge bad. Dodging bad is a, is a crucial part of the raid ever since Vanilla, even, compared to Mythic Class. We were talking about, as an example, Smolderon. Well, 
the biggest problem of Smolderon when you start progressing it is to actually stay alive from all of the swirlies spawned by players. That is almost never a thing in Mythic Plus. In Mythic Plus, all those things would be enemy casts that you have to stop with stuns and crowd controls rather than dodging, even on Tindral. The biggest problem of Thindral can be the swirlies on the ground, the big fire swirlies on the ground, even the big pools of fire from the dispel, even the small circles of the roots without having to stack too close to kill yourself with that. And then you have of course Ferak as well. Phase 1 is all about dodging the lines of the copies of Ferak. On top of that you also have blazes, you have to line yourself up to not double tap other players. In phase 3 there are no more lines of the copies of Ferak, but now you have swirlies on the ground to dodge, and even tornadoes around the edges of the room that you have to dodge. Those are all things not really happening nearly as much in Mythic Plus. So once you carry over, once you are a Chad player who kills Mythic Ferak in a rank 100 guild, and you carry it over to a Mythic Plus key, a plus 18, all of that goodness you did on Ferak about dodging stuff isn't really going to be valuable if you do no good offensive. What did all that dodging do if you're doing no good offensive? So your staying alive in a raid is much more about dodging because the use of defensives is much more tied to specific events. Like, okay, I'm gonna use my defensive on the first absorb soak of Rashok because then that two minute defensive is coming up during the intermission of Rashok, which is very dangerous. And then I can use it again after on the second absorb of the second part of the fight and then it's gonna come back for the second intermission of Rashok and then I have to be aware of the last phase of Rashok where the damage becomes even higher and at that point is basically use everything to stay alive every stomp every leap of Rashok the rest is gonna be about dodging Meanwhile, in Mythic Class is different. In Mythic Class is, okay, we are attempting to stop everything from being cast. If a cast goes off, and if the cast that goes off could be one-shotting me, and I know it's being cast because we are out of, of crowd controls, I have to use a defensive for that and stay alive. There is no dodging involved, there is no movement involved, it's just being aware of what's coming your way. And once more, this is the same for healers. Healers have to dodge just as much as a DPS in the raid. However, here's the thing. As I say all of this, you might be, you might be concluding them. So there is really no real overlap between Mythic Plus players and raiders, right? If you go in Mythic Plus as a raider, you basically carry no real knowledge. Same goes vice versa. If you are a top Mythic Plus player going into the raid, you aren't really bringing anything valuable. Nobody cares about how good you are at controlling 15 mobs. Nobody cares about how good you are at preemptively using your defensive on a possible cast because everything in the raid is scripted and vice versa. If you're a raider, nobody cares how good you are at dodging and, and stepping around things because there is barely anything to dodge in Mythic Class. So yes, the face value would tell us that you don't have that much that carries over in the two activities. There are, however, still some overlaps between the two, because being able to be aware of your weak auras and all the, the stuff you have on your screen telling you who to target, who to crowd control, how many interrupts do you have, all of the dangerous casts going your way, and you being aware that possibly a deadly cast is about to finish and is targeting you, and preemptively using a defensive, for example, that is still something that can be overlapped with having the awareness of dodging things in a raid. Dodging the lava waves of Rashok and being aware of all the casts in a Mythic Plus pack of 10 mobs and being aware if something is going your way might seem completely different, but at their base level still require you to be aware of what's happening of what's in the screen, looking at different things rather than your buttons or the boss, noticing them and acting upon them. The act in the two activities is different, because the act of you noticing that problem in the raid is often just dodging, whereas the act of you noticing those things in Mythic Class is use an interrupt, use a stun, use a defensive, etc, etc. But the awareness skill is something that you can carry over in both activities. 
same goes for your willingness to be precise and to be in-depth about something. If you are a raider who spends two hours looking at raid bots, looking at simulations and looking at raid logs to see how to improve certain things, how to use your opener or your burst cooldowns in the raid, it's very likely that you can carry over that skill in Mythic Plus and understand about the different size of the pools and where you can line up your cooldowns in those pools to maximize your damage. Again, those things look completely different, but the base skill level of doing those things, which is in-depth analysis of, of the pool, of the, the situation, is the same for both activities. So that is what we can conclude overall. Yes, in general, many slash most of the skills of a top Mythic Plus players are not really carried over in the raid, because most of the things a Mythic Plus player will do won't really be happening in the raid. Meanwhile, most of the things that a Mythic Raider will excel at won't really carry over in Mythic Plus. However, the base skill that makes you good in either activity can be carried over. Being aware of your surroundings, whether you're using that awareness to dodge stuff or to interrupt stuff, is the same. Trying to min-max your damage, your GCDs of your rotation and of your burst cooldowns, might look different than looking at logs to maximize the lining up of your CDs based on the pulls you are doing, but the base skill, the base knowledge for both is the same. So what I wanted to get at is that we spent almost 20 minutes this video asking about can Mythic Plus scale carry over to the raid and vice versa, just to say no, but actually yes. That is the answer for today. You don't carry over what you actually do in the activity, but rather the skill level. The base way in which you do things in the raid works the same in Mythic Class, just for different things. So you definitely have an advantage. If you are a good player in one PvE mode, you will still have a good base to start from in the other mode, at least as long as PvE is concerned. So. This was today's point around the goodness level of Mythic Plus players and Mythic Raiders and how well can they basically swap jobs and how well can they do those jobs even in a, in a completely different environment than what they are used to in what they are already good at. So this was the point we wanted to make for today on this Monday at the beginning of this week. So, for today, we are saying our goodbyes by thanking first, as usual, of course, all of the Patreon supporters, together with everyone who is supporting for free by liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. Now, with these pointless things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime... Now, it might have been the same for PvP players as well, but I don't know enough about PvP to draw that conclusion.